Hey everyone, welcome back to my videos for Romeo and Juliet. This video focuses on the context surrounding Romeo and Juliet. So in order to put Romeo and Juliet into, into perspective, you'll need to have a good understanding about William Shakespeare, the origins, influence and social and historical backgrounds underlying the play. So the setting. So it's often believed that the play is based on a true story. Supposedly, it's based loosely on an Italian love story set in the 3rd century. Shakespeare wrote his version of the tale in 1594, based on Arthur Brooke's poem in 1562. The setting of Romeo and Juliet was written in the Elizabethan era, also known as the Renaissance. This time period focused heavily on religion, politics, science, arts and language. As mentioned in one of the opening chapters, Romeo and Juliet is set in the Italian city of Verona. So, religion. So, at the time of writing, religion played a huge part in daily life. Romeo and Juliet references religious concepts throughout the play. There are a few key facts that you should make yourself aware of regarding religion and historical context. Romeo and Juliet were set in a Catholic society. This society has a strong belief in damnation as a result of moral sin. Examples of moral sins in the time in which uh, this Shakespearean text was written included bigamy and suicide. At the time this was written, the, the Reformation had just occurred. England broke free from Henry VIII's uh, papal control and instead became a Protestant, Protestant society. After this, society became more relaxed and open and less oppressive. In terms of religion, the church played a huge role in both society and Romeo and Juliet. In Shakespearean times, the church played a significant role in everybody's life. It was custom for everyone to attend church on Sunday. Anyone who didn't attend were punished with a fine. So when we speak about gender, it's apparent that there are clear distinctions between the male and female characters. So women were seen to have less power than men. Female characters were seen to have to obey men and do what they were told. A woman's main role in society in Elizabethan times was to satisfy the man no matter what. This is also true with regards to daughters. Daughters were considered to be disobedient if they did not obey their fathers. Shakespeare plays often draw upon conflict in relation to parent and child relationships. This is obvious throughout Romeo and Juliet, especially through the characters of Juliet and her father. So the, the father of each household is considered as the undisputed head. In the 21st century, the idea of a male breadwinner has slightly changed, and females now play a more active role. In Elizabethan times, women had no rights or authority with regards to the law. They were unable to own property or money. Children were subject to being property of male figures. Whether this was for their father or their partners, they had little say in what happened to them. The time in which the play was set was not uncommon for young females to be married at an early age, as early as 13. Children were often raised by a nurse and had little interaction with their parents. William Shakespeare's works appealed to the majority. Just like today, ticket prices were based on whereabouts he sat. Shakespeare wanted to target a mass audience from the merchants and nobles to poorer people. When it comes to reading the works of Shakespeare, it's important that, as the reader, you're able to understand how Shakespeare appealed to his audience. In his work, Shakespeare used language, imagery, themes, characters and narrative to appeal to his targeted audience. Okay everyone, so that's it for this quick, quick rundown of the context behind Romeo and Juliet. Don't forget for more uh, GCSE preparation, don't forget to check out howtobecome.com. Um, on that website you'll be able to find GCSE English revision guides as well as practice questions and exam advice. If you do have any questions about um, Romeo and Juliet or Shakespeare or your English exam in general, then feel free to leave me a message below the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to share this video with all of your friends. 
So that's it from me everyone. Thanks for watching and I wish you all the very best of luck with your GCSE English exam.